This week's podcast sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hey everyone, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We're at episode 734. This is being recorded on August 2, 2023. I am Sebastian Peake. I am Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. And I'm Kent Burgess. And we're back by popular demand. Dozens of people over the years have called, written in, and asked us to keep doing this. So we're going to keep doing it indefinitely. And you can help support this excitement by going to patreon.com slash PC per and be like uh, Peter KG, Steve, and MLB. What is MLB for the up? Please explain. MLB upped his, his pledge. Oh, for the up. And the ooh, is, right. Wait, and Major League Baseball supports Major League this baseball. pod. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Major League yeah. Baseball. And when yeah. I hear Steve, I hear the version from like uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Steve! That's that's the version that I hear in my head. Right? How about, how about uh, Homestar Running? Hey, Steve! Steve. Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. Very similar. Yep. Yeah. Less cartoony, but. Let's move to Laramie, Wyoming for Josh's the food segment. Uh, really? Josh, take it away. Okay. Well, you know what? They had the same special as last time. So the week before, they didn't have a special because they had to close it because their their entire sewer line collapsed. When I say collapsed, it literally collapsed because, well, we don't really want to get into it. I, I saw the pictures and it wasn't good. But they've cleaned things up and now you can use the the restroom and they can, you know, actually sanitize the place. Uh, so I, I got the popper. It's, it's a classic. It's the uh, raspberry chipotle. Well, you got to show the picture, don't you? <laughs> there, there it is. You it you know, always looks a little worse for wear when it comes out of the wrapper. But it's a double burger, half pound of meat. You got candied jalapenos. Raspberry chipotle jam and cream cheese. It's like a jalapeno popper burger, hence the name, the popper. And let me tell you, it's tasty. You ever get into town, you got to try it. And now the news. AMD has announced X3D for laptops. This news uh, came out Thursday last week, so it was far too late to add it to our podcast discussion. An unusual uh, embargo break of 9 p.m. on Thursday, July 27th. It's to coincide with a laptop being announced at a special event. And that laptop is from Asus, and the processor is the Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D. The processor name may look familiar, but the X3D part is new. This is now, according to AMD, the ultimate mobile gaming processor. 16 cores, 32 threads, up to 5.4 gigahertz boost, and 144 megabytes of cache. That includes 128 megs of the 3D V cache. It's fantastic. And something interesting, they were talking about power. This chart, I struggle with this chart because I'm. It, it shows that at 70 watts TDP with 3D V cache, you have an 11% performance boost. But if you drop the TDP down to 40, you get a 23% performance improvement. Even more amazing at mobile power envelopes, it says. So I'm guessing that just means the improvements are, they scale up as the wattage goes down. Not sure exactly. That doesn't make any sense. (laughs) (laughs) I I stared at this chart thinking, okay, there must be something in the end notes. And the end notes just talk okay, about... Okay, okay, I think I get it. I get it, okay, I get it, I get okay. it, I get it. Okay, okay, right. okay, okay, mm. okay, 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 here, here it is. All right, so they're compared. They're not comparing. They're, they're not comparing a 70 watt to a 40 watt. So you see, you're, you're, you're totally even with 3D cache disabled on a either a 30 or a, a 40 or a 70 watt CPU. Okay, but once you enable the 3D cache on a 70 watt TDP mobile it's 11% faster. When you enable 3 dB cache on a 40 watt TDB, you get a 23% improvement. So it's a terrible, 
terrible graph. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But no, it, it just that the it's it, it seems like the lower the TDP is, the bigger performance jump you get from 3 dB cache. Indeed. Yeah. So you may see even better scaling at 35 watts or 25 watts until, of course, you stop scaling. But yeah, that's a terrible yeah. graph. The only other thing I can think is that that's compared to the non 3D. 7945HX. I, I thought so, so too, but then it specifically yeah. says, it says 3D Vcache says, disabled, yeah. and then this one is 3D Vcache 70 watt TDP. And they talk about yeah, the systems totally. they compared it to, which include the oh, okay. non X3D version in the end notes, but on this chart, it specifically shows that the 3D Vcache is enabled, or it seems to. Yeah. I guess I'm just but inferring that. I think it's that. sort of saying that if, the, if you limit one that doesn't have 3D Vcache to 70 watt, then this one will be 11% faster. And if you artificially limit it to 40, how is it it's a, going to be 23? I guess in the in the modern era of Intel and their mobile parts drawing right? more power than that. But limiting a laptop CPU to 70 watts sounds insane to me. But yeah, that seems pretty high. Yeah. A chart that does make a lot of sense is AMD comparing their 7945HX, not the X3D part, to the 7945HX3D. And this new HX3D part is up to like 50% faster, depending on the title. It's an average of 15% faster or more compared to that non X3D version. But the only thing I'm worried about with this part is like its desktop counterpart, this is the big like 16 core 32 thread variant that only has 3D Vcache on one of the CCDs, as Mm -hmm. you can see from this picture, which means Windows has to be aware of this. Everything has to be set up just so. But this actually... It makes a lot of sense to have it on mobile because that way uh, the onus is on that laptop manufacturer to get everything set up just right before the user ever powers a laptop on for the first time. So maybe this is the ultimate AM5 X3D product. Yeah, maybe they'll get so granular in, in, in their control that they'll just totally turn off the second CCD and, you know, when, when it's not needed. Yeah. Just run great. it all off the 3D one. It would make sense for them to fall back uh, during power management. Absolutely. Or or when daylight savings. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. You spring ahead with X3D and then you fall, fall back. back with power management. And then you yep. fall yeah. back with power. Yeah. Not By the exactly way, uh, what I was talking about. yeah, uh, the new laptop that was announced that contains this ultimate gaming processor is what Asus is calling the ultimate gaming laptop. Now, the manufacturer recommends this product very highly. It's the SCAR 17 X3D. Now, do not be confused. There is already a SCAR 17, but not a SCAR 17 X3D until August 22. This is not confusing at all. Releasing a product with the exact same name as an existing product, but adding 3D to the end, when it already ended in HX, not going to confuse anyone. And certainly not when there's two identical looking laptops. And and here's another interesting tidbit. Uh, AMD, out of the blue, asked if I wanted to try out one of these mobile parts. This was before the X3D announcement. They sent a SCAR 17, but it has the HX, not the HX3D, because this is pre-unveil. This is a couple months ago. Hmm. So I will now have the pleasure of testing out one of these without the X3D. It was very confusing, though, because I, I was telling my wife about it. Because I figured she could test it for me because she's more of a laptop gamer than I am. I'm more of a desktop person. Then I saw the specs. I'm like, you're not getting this. This is, this is for me to test because it has a 4090 in it. <laughs> it's like AMD sent a laptop with a 4090 in it. Why? I thought this was going to be an all AMD laptop. So I had this whole story plan like going all AMD. And you no, know, it's got a freaking 4090 in it. I don't understand. Wow. They need some more laptop parts. Like, high, where's the 7900 XTX laptop edition? I don't think there is one. I think they're waiting for the yeah. uh, 7800 XT to uh, they're, give that the mobile treatment. Their ultra enthusiast line may just need a little bit too much power. <clears throat> ultra enthusiast. Yeah, we'll have to talk about the difference between enthusiast level and ultra enthusiast level parts as defined by AMD, but not necessarily. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move on. Moving. 
let's let's move past that story about X3D coming to laptops and talk about a desktop product. The Radeon RX 7000 family is pretty small still. You've got the Ultra Enthusiast segment at the top, the 7900 XT and XTX, and you have the little 7600, but nothing in between. However, Dr. Lisa Sue has confirmed that RDNA 3, new enthusiast level, let's see what she actually say here. Quote, in gaming graphics, we expanded our Radeon 7000 GPU series in the second quarter with the launch of our mainstream RX 7600 cards for 1080p gaming. We are on track to further expand our RDNA 3 GPU offerings with the launch of new enthusiast class Radeon 7000 cards in the third quarter, end quote. All right, so what does enthusiast class mean when if a 7900 is ultra enthusiast, would a 7800 XT just shoehorn into ultra enthusiast class or could we see the 78 or this would be a 7700 xt feels like enthusiast level i mean clearly they're just about done selling the 6000 series so it's finally time to replace them yeah, i think that, i think they've kind of cleaned out the the channel of those yes. parts and we certainly have been uh you know singing the praises of the 6000 series for price performance and and power and and really how nicely they've they've matured over the years it's still a a very reasonable card to have in in uh, high end gaming but yeah it seems like the 7700 and 7800 will be uh, hitting very soon and uh, those probably will be the mobile parts as their smaller GPUs but they still utilize the the chiplet architecture it seems uh, so yeah, it's going to be nice to finally have something that will replace the 6000, maybe still be a little bit more price competitive and uh, offer, well, maybe not a tremendous amount of features, but definitely better performance and and, and power, better power consumption. I wish we could talk about that help. GRE product, but we don't have a lot of- I was actually getting ready to bring that up. Okay. When I saw this story, I thought that's what... Uh, what this was about, but they, they had also announced, and it's going to be a, a China only model apparently, um, but it's a new model of the 7900. It's a 16 gigabyte card instead of the 20 or 24, um, and it's called the Sapphire GRE, which stands for Golden Rabbit Edition. Uh, but it is neither gold no nor, nor adorned with a rabbit. It's neither gold. There's probably some gold somewhere in it, but True. Um, not much yeah, rabbit. But, uh, yeah, it, and it's like, wait a minute. This is like the the thing that Nvidia just did that everybody hated, which was come out with a thirty eighty twelve gig, and everybody's like, no, that's a that's that's not the same card. It's a it's a it's a it's thirty seven or a forty seventy. Sorry, forty eighty twelve gig. Um, and now AMD's like, you know, that was a great idea. Let's come out with a 7900 that's lower spec and still call it a 7900. Um, but the complaint yeah, is just where released. Released. starts at 16 but we'll gigs. Just release it in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, we've already been introduced to, I mean, you know, 7900 XTX, 24 gig, and it's a 7900 XT, 20 gig. So what's wrong with 7900 GRE with 16 gig? Golden Rabbit Golden Edition. Golden Rabbit Edition. Oh, I see. Golden okay. Rabbit Edition. Anyway, speaking of special editions, I, I just don't know why I didn't have us on the list. The Radeon oh, yeah. RX 7600 Party Animals Edition. Oh, my. Let's look at this. It has peach-colored fan blades and a, I don't even, I don't know what Party Animals is, but this is a tie-in for that. I'm assuming it's a game. Why don't we get... An Ed from Sapphire quote on their party animal edition. I think that would be I wonder fun. if you had anything to do with the design and uh, marketing mm. of this product. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. yeah, what can you tell me about uh, party animals? Look at the back. Look at the back plate. Oh, there's characters. Whoa. There's characters on the back plate. Look at that. Oh, that one has a rabbit. It does. That, that one has a rabbit, but it is not. And it's also gold. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Interesting uh, yeah. contrast yeah. to the GRE edition, which is neither gold nor rabbit adorned. Mm. Sapphire does it right. Well, you know, we've not actually seen a true picture of it, so it might be both gold and have oh, a rabbit. GRE, yeah. Does it exist? Mm-hmm. Okay. We may never know. 
but you know what? It's supposed to be back back to the original stuff. It's supposed to be the end of this quarter. So we're looking by end of September, we'll have new enthusiast class GPUs on the market from AMD. And that can only mm-hmm. be a positive. And Josh, uh, speaking of AMD. What? And quarters. AMD? Yeah. Quarters. Quarterly. Okay. What happened? <laughs> Earnings. Well, they did announce their quarterly financial results. And they uh-huh. did okay. Uh, they have a uh, revenue of uh, five point three five nine billion dollars, which, you know, it's down a good one point two billion from like their highest ever. Um, which is you know not great, but it's not horrific. Uh, they still made about twenty seven million in positive income, net income. Um which is better than a loss, not as good as previous years, but you know, Q1 2023, they lost 140 million pretty much. So, you know, their, their revenue was, I mean, they took a hit and the areas that they have taken a hit is uh, some enterprise stuff. Uh, They've only now released kind of the Epic four series Uh, that's starting to gain traction, but they're still trying to sell through some of the, older stuff and that market has gotten a little softer. Um, they've only started shipping their MI series for AI stuff and uh, that's sampling out. Um, their uh, regular CPUs, uh, their 7000 series have been growing, uh, but overall it's still down from you know the, the, the gaudy heights that they once hit uh, during the end of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, the gaming stayed pretty steady. Uh, graphics continues to go down a little bit, but they're uh, semi-custom. Namely, you know, they still sell a lot of, they get a lot of revenue from uh, Xbox and uh, PS5. So, you know, overall, it was a solid quarter. It was above what Wall Street was expecting. They still pulled off a little bit of a profit, and uh, they expect next quarter to be a little bit higher. So, you know, things are kind of coming back. They, they think that graphics is a little stronger. Their CPU is getting stronger. Epic's getting better. They're addressing the, the AIR market with, with the MI series of uh, chips, which are interesting. And they seem to, you know, get a bit of interest. They still have to work uh, kind of on the software side to uh, catch up with NVIDIA. But, you know, they're getting more support. And with NVIDIA being sold out, to the rest of this year and picking and choosing who gets what allocation they have. Uh, if you want more, you're going to have to go to AMD. And it's kind of interesting. Someone showed uh, uh, that they were an ML AI group and they were thanking AMD for sending a bunch of gaming cards. And it was all a bunch of XFX uh, 7900 XTXs that they were unpacking and uh, utilizing for that kind of workload. So it's kind of interesting to see how things are going to shift because NVIDIA does seem to be uh, limited in their production. And I don't know if they're going to increase it or they're just going to keep their profit margins so incredibly high and not worry about those, those peasant gamers anymore who want to buy their cards. And if you want to buy their cards, you're, you're going to pay a premium for the 4,000 series. 4080, still 1100 bucks. Only eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, thought it was Only. twelve. So angry. No, that's that's you know usually there you can find them on sale for about eleven. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they still retail mostly for twelve. I was just giving them a small benefit of the doubt. On the subject of financials, Josh, Intel had their news release, their call about quarterly numbers too, huh? They, they did. Oddly enough, it's it's always nice. Intel does theirs first. And then AMD either the next day or the day after, or if it's a weekend, then the Monday after. Uh, but Intel uh, also had some weakness as compared to uh, previous quarters. Uh, they had a $12.9 billion in revenue, down 15% from second quarter 2022, which is a significant jump, but not as big of a gap as their fall from you know almost $20 billion a year 
that at the height of all the insanity that they were hitting. Uh, gross margin, uh, they have been really taking a hit there. They're, they used to um, really rely on their manufacturing to give them a significant edge. Manufacturing and design to give them a significant edge over AMD, and that has evaporated in both design and manufacturing. So while AMD is sitting at a 46% gross margin, Intel is down at 35.8%. It's uh, better than it was the quarter before, I believe. No, actually, it's no. It's Is it? No, it's 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 slightly better than the quarter yeah, before, but it's better. still it's still a far cry from the days of them nearly hitting sixty percent and sixty four percent consistently. So uh, they still made uh, one point five billion dollars, which is a tidy sum of money, and uh, they're still you know the world leader in, in CPU production. Um, we don't know much about. The graphics, their enterprise is is taking a hit because the market's softening a little bit, and uh, AMD is is kind of eating their lunch there. Uh, but it still, I mean, AMD's twenty five percent of the market share, and and Intel still has seventy five. So there's a long ways to go there. Uh, we don't know much about their graphics, um, and I'm glad my dogs are here to to add to the entire thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of weak. Uh, they're, they're, they're on the bad side of the IR, the AI and, and machine learning. They, they do have, uh, some, some specific products that they're offering there, but they have not taken off, uh, graphics still, you know, they, 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 they have new mobile parts, uh, the a 500 series, I think they are, but yeah, they're, you know, solid in, uh, continuing to put products out, um, their technology is improving in manufacturing. They're they're being very very aggressive in that area and spending a lot of money, and they need to. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it's a weaker quarter for them. Q two is usually always down. Uh, they expect to be still up. Um, you know, if you look kind of at their different groups, client computing group down twelve percent, data center down fifteen. Uh, Network and Edge down 38%, Mobileye down 1%, which not bad, but they're manufacturing. The IFS, it is up 307%. So they're getting customers and uh, starting to do that. And it's a a good thing for Intel and the industry to have uh, some more manufacturing and cutting edge stuff available to these, you know, third party uh, uh, non-foundry type designers. Speaking of increased, yeah, exactly. Breaking news space. as of you know ten hours ago when this was being reported. This is from Tom's Hardware. Intel plans massive fab expansion in Oregon. Yeah, that's in the USA. Just in case you're not familiar, if you're listening from outside of the United States, Oregon is a state in the northwest uh, part of America, the United States, USA. They actually have water there. Do yeah. They? Okay. Yeah. yeah which is which is. Turns out it's fairly critical for this kind of thing. So Intel intends to expand their D1X and rebuild D1A fabs. Making money. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, uh, they're, they're trying to get that stuff built out in Arizona. But again, it's, it's challenging. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder if, if this, in fact, isn't a little bit to do about water because, uh, you know, Lake Mead and all these places out west where reservoirs have been going down and only because we've had a really significant winter that has dropped a lot of snow across the west uh, has that kind of gone up. But um, where is it going to go in the future? Um, Yeah, I don't know. I wish I had some kind of insight into why they're doing the fabs this way, but... The, the Pat uh, uh, Gelsinger quote, I think, says it. Uh, I would be reticent to constrain my dreams for how big it might be in the future. Are you talking you about make it big. fab, or make is that big. more of like a personal comment? <laughs> he, he he literally said that. That's, he's literally quoted in that particular article for saying... You know, with enough money, anything is possible. 
I just feel like that's the best thing he, I could ever say. Like, it's like, wow, he doesn't it's pretty want big. To, like, well, he, I'd be reticent to constrain my dreams for how big it might be in the yeah. future. His dreams yeah. will not be constrained. I think we're going to get more mileage out of this quote in the future, I think. Yeah, hmm. I sense it. You know, I kind of that kind of thought about a few other things with with Intel Fab. Uh, it could be that they're not 100 percent utilizing some of these fabs, and so shifting production to you know one and then refitting another because they've got a ton of clean space. I mean, there's probably no other manufacturer in the world that has as much clean space as Intel. Uh, so you got to keep that utilized. And I mean, that's a lot of money that they poured into these buildings and the filtration and the air handling and all of that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's still machines and tools that can be used in advanced stuff that they don't need to get rid of. Uh, but you've got to kind of revamp stuff to get these three story, um, um, UHV, uh, sorry, EUV. I don't know where my acronyms have gone. Uh, these three story EUV machines up and plus the, uh, requisite power to power said tool. So, uh, yeah, it, it kind of makes sense that maybe let's, let's take what we got instead of building more and revamping it and, save a few billion dollars here and there. Mm -hmm. Well, their, their A plant there is probably still turning out 22 nanometer stuff that's used in cars and toasters. So yeah, they could take that offline and fulfill. The, I don't the think my toaster's on 22 line. nanometer, Brett. It's probably 28. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Yeah. <sighs> but right. your, but your car is still on 22. But anyway, that's the point is that they're taking that older la or fab from the eighties with, you know, the article says, from the 80s offline, they're going to refit that, and they've got plenty of space left in the other four on 10 and, and 7 nanometer, which is, I guess, Intel 7 and Intel 5. I, I, I lose track. I don't remember. <laughs> Too many numbers. Too many code names. <laughs> Too little uh, link to reality. It's time for mandatory ARC news, and we're not just coming up with stuff just to talk about ARC every week because we love it so much. There's real news. Intel Graphics on Twitter, at Intel Graphics on, or x.com or whatever it is. We're excited to make things sparkle in the GPU world. That's right. New hashtag Intel Arc GPUs from Sparkle have arrived. Find yours at Amazon, Newegg, and more retailers to come. So uh, here's a picture of these lovely new GPUs from Sparkle. I, it's nice that they're adding more brands because I was a little worried when the LE the limited edition from Intel of the 770 was discontinued. But if they're adding, and no doubt this triple fan here is the A770. I mean, why? Because mm -hmm. you got a dual fan, that's yeah. why the 750 and a single fan, 380. I've done no research. Mm -hmm. I'm just assuming. Oh, it's obvious, really. They, well, they should have linked to it. Is this is this picture do anything? No, it just takes me to a, the same thing. Mm -hmm. I want to link to Newegg. Vague. Intel Vague graphics, line. that affiliate. It's Intel. not on Newegg yet. It's not? Oh, okay. Well, it will no. be. Yeah, the ASRock uh, A770 16 is still the top at 330. Mm. Which is still a good price for yeah. what you get. Indeed. And you know what? They they release drivers so I know we talk about how fast they release drivers. Yeah, they Al, release in drivers the chat. Really fast. New beta drivers Intel Arc 31.0.101.4578 <laughs> beta is out. I uh wasn't I there a started time testing about a month like ago? three driver versions ago and it's only been like a two week <laughs> period of time and there's so many I think during a show, they released two drivers once, yeah. I think, during one I mean, of We can't even report on two, this stuff. There versions. will be another driver tomorrow. Before I even publish this, the show. there yeah. will be another driver. There'll be 4579. Well, wasn't the uh, latest uh, supporting uh, Baldur's Gate, which releases tomorrow, I think? Yeah, yep. Uh, Ryan yep. Shrout, I think, was on Twitter talking about that. Same That's strange. He was, he was excited about such things. that Intel had a day one driver for the game that was his, let me find it, his first experience with D&D, &D, he said. Let's go to Ryan Shrout on Twitter. Oh, oh he's, I'm following him, and he follows me. Ooh. That's exciting. All right, that's exciting. Ooh. That's for real. All right, let's see. Ryan Shrout, graphics marketing and Intel. Okay. Uh, retweeting Intel graphics stuff. Okay. The original Baldur's Gate was my introduction to D&D. Says Ryan Shrout of Intel. 
both in board game and video game form. Excited that at Intel Graphics has a game on driver for Arc GPUs, ensuring the new Baldur's Gate 3 is a great experience, provides amazing perf per dollar. That almost sounds like marketing speak. <coughs> almost. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, it's, hmm. it's close. They have an article about it on their website. Who's it written by? While to load. Uh, I would hope by Ryan... He probably just, oh, he did. He did. Yes. He he himself. Ryan the picture's not loading because apparently my internet is dial up. Awful. On this laptop. Mm. I what should probably your fiber? I, well, we're using the fiber, but okay. this laptop right. apparently is using like a wireless B connection or something. Ooh, I, don't, okay. I don't know, Sebastian. I, I look at Ryan's thumbnail of him in, in Twitter. And I think of when I used to watch you guys, and he was such a jovial, friendly guy. And now his Twitter thumbnail is just so intense and almost angry looking. He, and I just wonder what they've done to him at that at that. This is from place. like a hardware workshop, isn't it? This is from back in the PC Per era. Yeah, that's an old one, it looks like. He was like. on stage. No, 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 no. This is like CES when he first uh, jumped on to Intel. Oh, is it? Oh. Oh, okay. Or it's or Computex that he hmm. he did a, a very high energy, intense, you know, presentation and there's a lot of intensity. 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 Yeah. Intel intensity. In another story sourced from X.com, uh Sebastian. A hey, Sebastian. Uh, Hmm. Castellanos, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, was commenting on direct storage performance on versus off in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Now, if you delete two DLL files, dstorage.dll and dstoragecore.dll, you get a big increase in GPU performance, according to Sebastian here. Nothing is free in real life after all, is the comment. Well, surprise. And Hmm. here's the chart. Now, granted, these are high frame rate examples, so any any difference is going to be exaggerated when you're over 200 frames per second. But the difference is still there. 224.6 frames per second with it enabled. 265.4 if you turn off direct storage. So, yeah, there it's not free. The idea is that, you know, there's quite a few benefits from this, and it could just be an implementation issue. But we don't have a lot of games. We've got Ratchet and Clank. This was, is this the first one that has GPU decompression enabled? Because I remember talking to Alan about, uh, what was it called, <clears throat> Forspoken. And Forspoken, even though it was the first game that had direct storage enabled, it didn't need it because the developers did things to the game engine that kind of negated the importance of even using direct storage. But we have RTX IO now. We have direct storage... I- I assume the inference some... here is that direct storage is stealing quote unquote cycles from the GPU so that it can't spit out pixels in order to run direct storage calls. I That's, thought I, s- I'm yeah, reading I, thought between I saw the lines somewhere here. in here is that this was the first one that was actually doing GPU decompression and that was where the performance mm-hmm. penalty came from. Okay. <sighs> There's a whole lot. Of- I mean, it's not it's not just in the pipeline, you know, as a uh, an impediment to processing, you know, where you'd see that uh, those ki- kinds of things are often CPU bound. This is legitimately trying to offload some things to the GPU and is interrupting the normal flow of game rendering or pixel rendering. And that's that's what I'm reading here or stealing some of the capacity away or cycles, as it were. Although GPU, no, I mean, don't- it's got to it's got to do all the, the I.O. functions. Mm hmm. To get yeah. it from directly okay. from storage, so I don't know. And that's we should just put that's... the storage on the GPU. M.2 slots on GPUs. Oh, it's been you done heard it here first. It's been done, yeah. I guess, but it it could be done again, or maybe not. Yeah. Maybe direct storage is just one of those things. It was a stopgap. We could have taken advantage of it. That we're never going to properly utilize it. There'll be performance penalties, and then it'll just go away. And there'll be cards you know, with 64 gigabytes of a, memory in a year. It's, that's a really interesting observation. We used to do a lot of things to get around lack of bandwidth, for instance, with uh, internet services and trying to do local caching and things like that. Now, often it doesn't matter. There's enough bandwidth that can kind of soak up the sloppiness in doing certain things. And, you know, you generally have enough speed to get the job done. You don't need to do any tricks anymore. High compression images and that's nah, not necessary. So maybe technology could, caught up. Maybe we could partition 
the RAM on the video card. Ooh. NVIDIA taught us with the 970 Ooh. that but you, you need a lot of RAM. A second partition. But no, what I'm saying is the partition eight, eight could gig be isn't cheap, gonna do it. cheap RAM, not GDDR6X. Oh. Put some hmm. DDR4 server on RAM. there. Just put some, some reused server RAM. Something. That would do and, it. And just say, oh, hey, put this on the, the directly attached RAM, creating mm-hmm. a RAM cache right there on the PCB, you know. And all these new GPUs only use eight lanes anyway, so use some of those PCIe lanes mm-hmm. for storage. The no, you're on something. of dual GPUs, one for direct storage and one for the gameplay. And leave a couple lanes open for future expansion. Like, uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, you weren't using all those lanes anyway. No, it's, it's pointless. AMD and NVIDIA have proven that at least in the mainstream, you don't need more than eight lanes. In fact, you can even sometimes get away with four and nobody cares. Well, nobody when, minds. Nobody talks when, about it at all. When four is equal to 16s yesterday, are you really seeing a difference? Yeah. PCIe SIG says, hey, let's just make it faster than copper can even support. I don't know if we have that on the list or not, but that was a story. Mm-hmm. No, we don't. They, they want to go optical because copper just can't support these outrageous specs they keep writing. Like, oh, double mm-hmm. it. Double it again. Oh, wait, copper can't do that? Oh, we'll make it optical then. Oh, that will make motherboards really cheap. Well, oh, they're yeah. having to implement yeah. some kind of copper interconnect. Or, I'm sorry, West. optical interconnect. Yeah. Windows 11 is learning about high refresh rates. Finally. Does this mean that my mousing experience will be smoother than ever before? Well, maybe. It's more that uh, if you hook up more than one high refresh rate display, your car, your graphics card won't be spinning its fan like crazy all the time, which is currently what happens. Because it's just, all right, we'll do 120 hertz on uh, both of the monitors, even though one's showing text and the other one isn't even actually displaying anything other than the desktop. So it's been driving people nuts. Because, I mean, one, you're, you're doing work for no reason. You're chewing up power for no reason, and it can get kind of loud. So there's a new one that they're going to figure it that uh, should be coming out possibly with a future update uh, later on this year, where it's going to be aware of the high refresh rate monitors, and it will lower the refresh rate on one that's just showing text or just hmm. you know showing the desktop. So it, now you can have asynchronous displays more or less. So instead of them both having to run at the same uh, refresh rate, one can be much slower than, than the other. And the other thing it's supposed to fix is for people that, for whatever reason, like to watch a video and play a game, well, it's going to cap your video to whatever YouTube or whatever it is can handle, whereas your game is going to get as many frames as it can possibly generate. So it's not an exciting update. It's just like, a why haven't you done this already yet? This is crazy. So we should see it soon. Oh, and it's also going to go for uh, laptops as well. It won't just be desktop GPUs. And that makes even more sense because now you've got your integral one, which, you know, is showing email or something, and an external one actually showing stuff. So, again, it'll be able to unlink the, uh, the two uh, refresh rates. In our next story, uh, Cable Mod apparently had some... We were talking about this recently. Kent, were you talking about how many right-angle 12-volt high-power adapters they'd sold, which gave us kind of an idea of how successful the 40 series has been? They, they have sold a, a, a tremendous amount of them. I don't recall the numbers off the top of my head, but they have had a few failures. Um, and these relate to an update to the spec that occurred a few months ago, not the latest to the 12 plus 6 or, or whatever the new spec is, but they, um, there, was a, there were two manufacturers of the female pins. And... One of them seemed to be a cause of a lot of the problems of the plug not fitting in in a, in a stable way where it could easily shift back and forth. Um, and that pin was what Cable Mod had used on all their adapters. If I can get this to focus, and it no won't. No focus. Uh, so this is one of their 180 adapters. Um, and they've had a few problems, but the, uh, Cablemont has absolutely stood behind these. They've sent the cards for repair and replaced the. Uh, they've and they've donated the cards that they've repaired and simply replaced the owner's cards when they had the melting plug issue. 
Um, and again, it's it's just the melting plug. There's not actually real damage to the cards, um, and just the plug needs replaced. But so what Cable Mod has done um, is they are implementing those new female pins with the different barbs on them, um, uh, and improve the tightness. But anyone that's an early adopter of these, this original one, um, they have sent a coupon to their email, a coupon code. It's good for basically the price of a new adapter, of their updated adapters. They don't have the 180s available yet, but they do have the 90 degree, um, and then they've got uh, another angled adapter. I think it's probably like a 45, perhaps, um, coming in a few weeks. Um, so yeah, they're giving coupons to everyone who bought one of these just to replace them with the new version. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's how business should be done and, uh, they're doing it right. It broke. They fixed it. Yep. And they're taking responsibility financially, which is the most important way to take responsibility. Let's pause here for a word from this week's podcast sponsor. Tell me that you've had enough of the frozen dinners already this summer. You can have your free time and create fresh and tasty meals with HelloFresh. Let HelloFresh take care of the meal planning and deliver you top quality ingredients so that everything you need to whip up a delicious meal arrives right at your door. Those pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on wasted food while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze and not a chore. And personally, I do need those instructions when building something in the kitchen. Believe me, our entire package from HelloFresh was impressive. We first made delicious creamy tomato soup with sauce in only about 20 minutes. All the ingredients were clearly set out for two or four people, well marked, and the recipe card was informative and very easy to follow. The finished soup was fantastic and well accompanied by their oven-baked cheesy baguettes as a side. Again, supplied as uncooked ingredients, just like everything else. Delicious. HelloFresh also has a variety of options that you want for making great dinners, so it's not just the same thing all the time. They keep out the boredom with 40 recipes to choose from each week. You can always find something familiar to like or a great new dish to try and love. So go to HelloFresh.com slash PCPer50 and use code PCPer50 for 50% off and free shipping. So start your experience with America's number one meal kit and go to HelloFresh.com slash PCPer50 and use code PCPer50 for 50% off and free shipping. We're back and let's go to a story from Bleeping Computer. This is Security Corner, by the way. Twitter rebranding to X triggers Microsoft Edge security alert. So if you didn't know this already, it's problematic. I mean, it's oh, problematic in a number oh, of Elon. ways. Uh, yeah. it's just, so the, the app icon created the security yeah, alert? it changed. Okay. So it's like that's often a way that you're going to fool someone into going to a site that they think is one thing but is actually another. So it's pop it up and say, hey, you know, you should probably just uninstall this. It's probably starting to steal your information, which is well, not I mean, completely inaccurate. Yeah. But, yeah, it's not something they wanted. Uh, and then, of course, not to be outdone, on the Apple Store, apps have a two-character minimum limit. So it's still Twitter on the App Store for Apple because you can't have just one character. Couldn't they do, like, underscore X? He already has SpaceX. Oh, it's... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you win. He's too clever. Yeah, you win the podcast. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Dang it. All right, our next story. Uh, Firefox 116 patches high severity vulnerabilities. This is at Security Week. Brett, tell me more. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, Firefox needs to have a turn at uh, hair on fire. Please patch this quickly. So they've got 14 uh, CVEs, of which some of them are real doozies. I think my favorite one is a um, the ability for a hacker uh, to render a dialogue off screen um, in a space where it can't be seen so that the, the layout is wider than the view that the uh, person is interacting with. And the the next bit makes this just so delicious. They can uh, trick you into clicking on something, say a link on the screen, but you're really agreeing to a security access dialogue that potentially gives the hacker no free reign to access your camera, your microphone, or your hard drive or something like that. So it's, it's that level of severity. Um, yeah, you really need to patch this one. Uh, but again, that uh, description was one of my favorites. 
absolutely horrendous. And uh, like I said, Firefox gets its turn. 9to5Mac is reporting hidden VNC tool gives attackers full access to Macs. Comes with a $100,000 guarantee. What does? That that you'll be hacked? Is Apple giving out $100,000? What's going on? No, no, no. no. The $100,000 guarantee is uh, a place where wares are exchanged. And in order for the hacker to be sort of taken seriously, what they do is they put $100,000 in an escrow account if the hack that they are selling in the wares space doesn't pan out to be as effective uh, as the... Uh, hacker purveyor promises it will be. Uh, anyone with sixty thousand dollars burning a hole in their pocket can come in and and pull down this tool and get it a, a customized version built for them. And it's got add-ons like a twenty thousand dollar add-on that enhances the hack. Uh, it's really a, a, a great uh, environment uh, to get what you need to hack other people. But this Mac hack is a what's called a hidden or HVNC tool. The Mac has a typical way of doing VNC like many computers do, but the Mac has a special mode that allows your computer to be observed and controlled remotely without you noticing anything. Uh, and this takes advantage of, of that mechanism. It is remotely exploitable uh, and uh, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Uh, they have this tool that's available all the way up through 13.2 or something like that. I think the latest version of uh, Mac OS X is at 13.5. So uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure that's the, uh, uh, OS 10. That's OS 10. Yeah. Not X. It's Roman yes. Roman numeral. You have you're, to you're, shift you're right. into Roman <clears throat> numerals in the middle of. I think it, it will English. always be X to me because mm, it was, it was X never for correct. So long. It was never correct. Anyway, this is a particular hack where you need to sort of volunteer your way into it. You've got to uh, click on a suspicious link, download some nasty bit of malware, uh, you know, your, your uh, cracked version of Photoshop or whatever application that you're, you might have one of these as a ride along. So, uh, and stop doing that sort of thing because you're just giving the keys of the kingdom to the hackers and giving your, all your data away. So I guess just buy the software. You're, you're holding it wrong. Or it wouldn't happen. Mm. It's not vulnerable. Yeah. I don't think properly. this is a holding it wrong. This is a, you've invited the the nasty people into your house and now they live there. <laughs> By the way, why is this so Apple focused? The next story, is this the next story? Uh, Chat GPT uncovers related. Mac malware on the dark web. The, f the funny thing is, is this particular HVNC hack, I'm not sure it was originally uncovered using this, but this story is definitely about someone asking ChatGPT to find Mac malware and literally came up with this one, this particular hack. It went out and found it and said, hey, how about this? So it's an interesting side effect of ChatGPT's ability to crawl the web with an English language question and find stuff that you normally wouldn't find. So okay. Fool to Dream in the Discord chat uh, pointed out that even Apple hacks are too expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's because they're rare and unusual. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Macs were unhackable you know, when nothing ran on them. Like it's PowerPC, yeah. you know, they had ran some educational anyone, software and, you know. Anyone with $60,000 can... can download this and take full advantage of it. So, you know, it's open to everyone. It's time for gaming quick hits and something about uh, Humble Bundle, it looks like. This must be Brett. It is. This is a uh, $12 a month uh, sign up, cancel whenever you want. But you can't get Disco Elysium, the final cut, any cheaper. Plus, you get a handful of other games as well. So why not go and grab yourself the latest Humble Bundle for twelve dollars, and cancel it next month because you <laughs> definitely get this <laughs> yeah. hysterically fun game. That's what they want you to do. Hey, just well, why don't they just say, "Hey, have this for twelve dollars"? Not because uh, I guess the, people will forget because you might forget to there will be yeah there will be a number of people who forget and they'll sign up next month. But you know what? You'll get a bunch of other games. As, Chivalry as well. Two or Road Ninety Six gets really good reviews. Some of it's a little, some of it's a little indie, though. But, hey, yeah. IGN Spain gives this a 9 out of 10. <laughs> so that's good enough Ooh. for me. <laughs> Trek to Yomi? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So 71% positive on that one. Arcade Paradise. They don't give any ratings. So much one. arcade. So much arcade. Such art. So yeah, your, oh, such your art. $12 really stretches on this. I think uh, it gives you tin your... can. Yep. Hot brass. Take command of a crack SWAT team and master a range of challenging missions in you hot need brass. To volunteer for voiceovers. <laughs> hot brass. Hot brass sounds like it should be hosted on X.com. Yeah. <laughs> right. Master the tools at the your disposal. You know, Pat Gelsinger says that the size of his hot brass. It's just, you know, just never mind. <laughs> it, it will not be bound by his imagination, I think, is no, where he was going. It's, it defies no. logic and imagination. And, Why put limits? It, all boundaries will be pushed. It def, it will so they'll be pushed hard, boundaries. too. They will be pushed hard and repeatedly <laughs> mm-hmm. over with great over friction. Again. All right. Uh, let's see what's next. Another value buy. Okay. This, the gaming quick hits hey, are filled prime, with value buy. Prime gaming. That's Amazon, it isn't it? it? It's is included Amazon. in my Prime subscription. It's included yep. in your it Prime is. subscription. Wow. It's free. It's free with Prime. Oh, no. Windows only. The thing, oh, well, yeah. the, the thing we're talking about here is uh, the almost classic Star Wars The Force Unleashed. What do you mean almost classic? Free. Well, I mean, has it moved into classic? Does it have to be old? How old does it have to be before it moves into classic? It's what, four years old now? Uh, does that count? Is that, is that no. classic? Oh, the Sorry, Force Unleashed? Oh, no. It's quite old. It's at yeah, it's least... older than four years. Yeah, Jedi Fallen Order is four years old. Huh? Yeah. Okay. When was this? 2009. November 2009. 2009. Okay, that's, oh, that's classic right. I, I, I think that's, that's, that's classic gaming. Classic yeah. adjacent. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you it's do have zone. to use the Amazon Games Launcher on oh, this one. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't suck too yeah. bad. Mm, no, thank you. I don't know mm. about that. They had Just another, but it is free. It is free. Yeah, but is it anything really free? It's free if you use their launcher, which they yeah. probably mm-hmm. mines. To, like Amazon doesn't already know everything I do and say. Yeah. You know, if you're already a member of Prime, just give it up for Amazon. It's, if you if you have an Amazon <laughs> Echo or whatever device in your house, they already know. Oh, it's just listening to you anyway. They know when you go to the bathroom in the morning and how long you're in there and, you know, <laughs> exactly. everything else about your life. It's time for Picks of the Week. Josh, please <laughs> save us. Okay. I, I, I finally fell down. I did it. I ordered this. It's, it's the Next Storage Japan, which I found out today was originally a Sony subsidiary that they created a storage unit, and then they sold it to Fizon. Mm. So Fizon actually owns Next Storage Japan. Mm. And you can get their 4 terabyte PCIe 4.0 for 258 dollars and 62 cents. And I just I want the extra space on the uh on the uh on my Steam drive. So I thought you were going to say it. PS5. I thought you were going to say, I want the extra space on nope, my PS5. No, I don't have a PS5. I but look at this picture here. It's just, it's, it installs easily into your PS5 and it has the attached it does. sync, which is great. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So perfect. easy. So easy. So, yeah, I'm I'm doing that. I, I just have too many M.2 drives in the house now. I need to Wait, do more do things have, with them. Is it up to like Allen levels of craziness? With no. Your M.2 collection? no, nothing, no? nothing oh, is no. up to Allen levels. No. I think it has to be a professional like data center. In, in fact, he may even have more than yeah, data centers. Yeah, I think he does have more than many data centers. Well, that's just his Plex server. I mean, forget about the, yeah. just the stuff he does for fun and his job and all that. Jeremy, are you next? Yeah. What do you, what you got? The Humble Case Fan, which is never exciting to talk about, but when you need one because one dies, boy, do you ever wish you had some spares. So right now, the Corsair ML120s are on sale for a mere $15 locally here in Canada. Hey. So, Ooh. Wow. That's... They're decent fans. This one will work on a Rad 2. And they're too. maglevs. Yeah, they're maglevs. 
So that's a really nice price. They're they're twenty five bucks off, so less than half price. Do these require one of their controllers, or does it have a standard um, header? That's PWM. I, it's I, just normal. I think it's Perfect. LED Elite just, white. Yeah, the white ones. Yep. Okay, so no. Uh, they had no some different colors if you don't like the white ones. That's uh, very affordable. When you said uh, humble case fan, I thought it was going to be a subscription service. I wasn't. I'm not no. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we only have one mil subscription fan every service. Week. <laughs> Nice. Uh, that's a single pack. What's the pack of two? Hold on a second. Let me see. Uh, it wouldn't go Can for me. I got click on it, and it's just like, yeah, no. Oh, sorry, it's just like freaking thing. out. That, uh, yeah. Ooh, some, some sort of web. Lincoln, you'll miss it. Rendering issue. Frame color. Oh, they yeah. have a white frame? White? No. Yes. That's also 14. Oh, oh, okay. So I don't know uh, if that would, on the list. That would go... With that Azrock uh, board, yeah, I just uh, I posted oh, yeah. of that this morning. Azrock has these new white motherboards, and add in a Corsair white fan. That all white build of your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, if for some reason you're into that sort of thing, get yourself a white PSU. A lot of white things have a lot of RGB on them. I know Corsair yeah. uh, has a white PSU, but the fan is like a rainbow. But this is just white with a white fan, white frame. And a bunch of RGBs. Be Quiet has white frame fans too, actually. Yep. But are they fourteen ninety nine Canadian? Doubtful. I don't think so. Brett, your pick. Oh, we're buying so many electronics nowadays: televisions, vacuum cleaners, even an oven. Everything has Wi-Fi interface and a a remote control uh, and uh, some sort of cloud based way of managing it. Doorbells, cameras. Why not? Try and take control of your home automation again. Try this device from, I think it's Hubitat. I think it's how it's pronounced. It's the Elevation Model C8 Home Automation Hub. And it's designed for, I'd say, the, the uh, technically savvy, crafty engineering. You don't even have to be an engineer. You can be a wannabe. It's a little bit of scripting that can you can take on. But it allows you to communicate locally with all of these devices and write fairly simple programs that are based upon characteristics that you deem from different sensors, like temperature sensors or time of day, or or you can access it with a uh, an application that talks directly to the hub. I actually got one. This is the size of it right here. Pretty small. Just a couple ports on it. That's it. So I'm going to be uh, trying that out, writing some scripts, and talking to some automation that I have here, or trying to take over some things that have their own apps and communicate more directly with them and see what I can do to drive them. It's a very vibrant community out there that is creating APIs that are capable of talking to things like receivers or or even automated blinds. Uh, there's so many apps and things that are, mm -hmm. is horrible. We're switching between them. It's a way to kind of bring them all home to a single application and control them rem remotely. Stop sending all your data to the cloud and giving away and and when stuff goes down or gets retired, you have no way of controlling it. This is a way to kind of keep control of those pieces that um, maybe a company doesn't support anymore. And maybe have some fun with it and do some crazy things like being able to talk uh, to your app or even Alexa. Alexa will talk to this as well. I probably just sent, uh, sent some people's Alexas off, but you can send this commands and uh, just say, Hey, you know, convert my, room to movie mode and it talks to your light bulbs and turns your TV on and switches your receiver <laughs> over and it's the dream of automation. Home automation, I should say. It's John Doe uh, something in the chat says, my home is automated by telling my son to turn off the damn lights. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's truly living the I, dream. Yeah. That is away from the that. That. living the dream. <clears throat> Bring yeah. daddy oh, another beer. <laughs> Thermostats, <laughs> televisions, receivers, they all have extensions yep. for all the all that sort My, of stuff. That's all actually, in the mid-1980s, um, we didn't have a modern TV, but it did have a remote control because my mom would just say, turn it to channel, whatever. And I'd get up and I'd go across the room. and That would be you. You were the It had a control. separate VHF and UHF um, oh, yeah. dial. Yes. And I had to like mm -hmm. switch it for her. Put it on channel 41. Okay. Uh, 
No, put it back on 17. Yes, this is UHF yes, mother. witchcraft you speak of. <laughs> yes, mother. Nice and then they have Josh. to fix the antenna because there, there was mother. this one position where it's like up on one side and down on the other for channel three, but then channel 41 needed it like down the other way and then like. You know. Actually, you know, kid, just keep your hand on the TV. You're yeah, it's, sometimes you would. If <laughs> I wanted to watch the Star Trek rerun that was on without it being fuzzy, I'd have to hold like the left rabbit ear and stand like two feet away from the screen. Come in. <laughs> was it the golden rabbit ear? Mm. No. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. Kent, do you have a pick this week? Yes. Um, you know, like a lot of... Folks who've been watching YouTube for the last few years, I've been hearing about these small form factor wallets to replace the old leather ones. And I was always intrigued, but, you know, I was sort of, you know, I, I, I like my old leather trifold. And then a couple of people I know had, had downsized to these new form factor wallets. And one of them, who's another desk pound fellow like myself, who's also around my age, was like, man, I switched, and like within a month, my lower back pain had gone away. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll give it a try. But I didn't want to spend a uh, hundred bucks on a wallet uh, for a ridge. And so I started looking, and I found uh, the brand Titan X. Uh, they have a variety of wallets of different styles. Some like the uh, the ridge. Why are you not focusing? There we go. Uh, some like the Ridge. This one is a little different style. One thing I didn't like about the Ridge was the card access. Um, this one, you have a little strap, and you pull up, and it you've just got reminding access. You not, not to show your card numbers on screen right now. Oh, I, I, I planned for that. <laughs> Wait, is there a three-digit there? Let's I'll just put, take that <laughs> no, out. No, no, no. No okay. three uh, but the Titan X, the, this one is made of aluminum and carbon fiber. Um, they all have a lifetime warranty, uh, just like the Ridge and some of the other high price models. Um, they have a wide variety. The, the one I got is called the Pro Slide Edition. Oh, you didn't the get nice a trifold? Thing, I thought you were a trifold user before. No, no. I was going to try with something slim that was front pocketable. Um, okay. And uh, they uh, they're all much less expensive than the uh, than the Ridge wallets. They've got a wide variety, and also mine. They include the uh, AirTag clip if you are one of those people who want to do that. Uh, and they've got a coupon for fifteen dollars off. So any of their wallets just take fifteen dollars off the price. So that ends up being. Uh, half or less than half of the price of some of the, the Ridge wallets. They've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, so if you get it and you don't like it, send it back. Um, and it's got a lifetime warranty on all the parts. Um, yeah, and I've I've actually just had it a little over a week, and I don't think I'll be going back to a, an old leather trifold in the back pocket. Um I found it pretty convenient and much more comfortable to wear around, especially when driving. I think it'd be cool if they gave you the rebate by some starter cash. Like you paid full price, but yeah. they tucked $15 in it and then sent it to you that way. It's like, we want to start you out on the right foot. Here's some cash for your wallet. That would actually be a pretty cool promotion. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> I found a picture of uh, Kent shortly before switching to this slim mm, new wallet okay. and it wasn't it wasn't pretty. oh yeah yeah here it is the thickness uh, the trouble that wallet <sighs> put me through i lost my hair because the, of it um, mm, the bulging but now, receipts you know, because of titan x my hair's back yeah unintended side effect mm -hmm. of the rfid blocking by the way the hair comes back mm -hmm. it was rfid the hair comes back hair loss <laughs> Is the result of stray uh, signals in the air? Of course. Yet yeah, my tin hat protects can, me from hair we loss. We can blame on high frequency signaling. Mm -hmm. Damn it! Five G fried my hair. I mean, yep. I thought it was started, UHF. Sorry, falling out. That started back when he had to go and adjust the antennas. So that's yeah. <laughs> when it started. I kind of miss. I feel like my son. There's so many things, and I know every person says this about the next generation, but. Like he's gonna, there's just certain things he's never gonna experience that were character building 
things. Like the disappointment of missing a show. There was no way to get it to air oh. again. If you forgot oh, to record it, it or if you didn't have a VCR, it's gone. It's gone. You mm. missed it. I oh, missed episode it's six. Reruns. Imagine being sent to bed. Wait, Josh, while you, the sh- a show Josh was on. <laughs> Oh, I said I missed the, the last episode yeah. of Auto Man. I'll never see it again. <laughs> if and it's I got true in to this day, if I, in, if I got in enough trouble to be sent to bed early and I didn't get to see the show I was looking forward to, it was devastating. Yeah, was just, there, that yeah. level of punishment. It, I was like, you can't stream that crushing. tonight. You'll have to stream that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> in oh, perfect quality. Okay, <laughs> on your iPad. Without commercials, yeah. I miss ba- I miss Buck Rogers. I won't see it again until I'm forty-seven. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, I can real. I remember those days. I remember being oh, yeah. very upset at missing Buck Rogers. Or, uh, oh yeah, I actually yeah. remember. Like for thirty years, was- I was the only person I knew who remembered the Star Wars. Christmas special, the oh, holiday oh, special. Well, they tried to erase it. Everyone wow. can re- well, yeah, uh, but everyone. I mean, I couldn't remember how bad it was. I was like eight or nine, but I just remember I was there just had so been. So excited one. to see Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And no one else I knew remembered this. And for years, I was like, "Did I make that up?" <laughs> nope, that nightmare then, was real. The nightmare was real, but it was the first appearance of Boba Fett. You know, it if if it hadn't been such a debacle, then maybe George wouldn't have become so, you know, crazy about his movies later on. Because that was the way he said, never again, the, never giving up that level of control again. You're totally glossing over the uh, made for TV Ewok movies, though. Oh, no, those I, I saw those grab. in the '80s as those well. Were yeah. They were terrible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, and the, yeah. And the cartoon, the, the aerobics, the, the, the little well. girl with the aerobics headband. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, we've reached the end of another. Oh, where's the camera? Right. Yeah. There we go. We've reached the end of another podcast. It's uh, it's been a podcast in history. Uh, we've made history this week uh, by recording episode 734 for the first time. 